We are watching a girl being raped here. Hey, welcome back to Lustcast. This is a bit of a special episode because I had to delete the last one because the model that came on, a porn star Nelly Kent, she made allegations of abuse by Rocco Safedi. And she came under a lot of pressure and I felt forced to delete it in the end. So in this podcast, I'm going to be going through what exactly happened and be talking about how the porn industry silenced the models that spoke out against abuse. And I'm going to be talking about what we can do about it. And I'm also going to be going through some evidence of abuse that I found on Rocco Sifredi. So it's going to be a bit of a big episode. Yeah, it's a last cast uh, extra, if you will. Yeah, and like, you know, subscribe, share, all of that. Um, but I think the most important thing is to, you know, share this episode and get it to the people that can help. So um, first and foremost, why are we doing this uh, episode? Well, the main reason is um, I think... The episode we did had like such serious allegations of bad things happening in the porn industry. And I think when I deleted it, that makes it sound like, oh, so it's not true. She was lying or, um, you know, it, it doesn't sound credible anymore. So it's like, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. A mistake by me, a mistake by her. And it's like much more complicated than that. And, um, I think the most important thing for me is like I've been working in porn for like 10 years now, I think. Like me. Yeah, in this situation, it's made me so angry that I just can't really keep my mouth shut anymore. Like I was not in good conscience now. Yeah, you've got fury in your... In, in, yeah, yeah, I'm like shaking a bit now because I'm just so angry just thinking about you it. You know, I can relate to that because uh, I've also experienced, you know, situations where I just could not stay uh, still mm. and I just had to do it until I felt justice has been uh, served. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I understand. And today I'm here to help you to ask uh, questions and, you know, make it sort of a discussion. Yeah, and it's really useful because I think it it's easier to clarify your thoughts when yeah, sure. you're talking to someone else. But, but Aren't you tired of me being on the podcast? I would like someone more famous, please. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I mean... No, you're great. Do so you know it? <laughs> Whatever. We've done it together, haven't we? A lot of it. Yeah, and, it's a journey. And I think also, like, until I started this podcast, no one was talking about European porn. Like, they would Not watch really. the videos, but no one knew anything about who makes it or how it's made no not really. or if there are any problems no and now like me you and others are talking about what it's really like yeah you know it's shining a light on it and yeah but like, um, what we see is not always like you know well, it's not always good yeah and um we get a lot of shit for it i mean i i can uh, say with certainty that you know these small clips that you also make, some mm -hmm. people refer to them from time to time. and In the business? Uh, in the business and also outside of the business. And so, you know, people do watch those and they listen to those and I think they find it very interesting. Yeah, I think the main thing for me, like the reason I just had to make this episode, and I hate doing negative things about the porn industry because... You know, in the 10 years I've been in this business, I've absolutely loved it. Yeah, we it's, love it. Yeah, it's given me a lifestyle that most people can only dream of. I, I've had That's very experiences. True. Like my life has been like a movie for the last mm -hmm. 10 years or something like okay. that. Okay. And um, But at the same time, especially here in Budapest, which is where I work and where I know, there's always been an undercurrent of bad things happening. Yeah. And I've always said to people like, we all know who the bad people are. We yeah. all know what they do, but nobody ever speaks out. So let's go back to um, the episode with Nelly. Yeah. Um, so was your intention to actually talk about Rocco himself 
or the idea was different to begin with no no the, the podcast was supposed to be about rough sex so it's rough like sex how to do it what it's about like things to avoid things like but that but somehow it was more about the dark side of the industry i would say yeah she just came out with it and it was a shock so she so like, it was actually nelly who initiated to talk yeah. about certain people yeah okay like certain people certain things i don't know maybe it was just on her mind and she yeah was pissed she off felt like a sharing it all just came out and um the thing she alleged was so serious and I, i'm oh yeah i remember some yeah she didn't use the word abuse but that's how i described it because yeah that's she basically what it is. described <laughs> like, it she described like rocco punching girls yeah she described a dislocated um, implant yeah jaw like, i remember yeah and the most um, important thing for me was that she described that you know there isn't consent for this before the scene starts okay and you know that's <laughs> that's just so bad like it's <laughs> not mean, it how sounds, things it, are meant to be done it sounds bad but eventually she took it all back right yeah so and that's why i want to go through the timeline really because like what you're going to decide is like do you believe what nelly originally said or do you believe she's lying and personal like when 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 she did the podcast i was so shocked and obviously i'm publishing the podcast yeah. so it opens me up to legal liabilities yes yeah, true if she's lying or if i tell a lie so after the podcast finished recording i said to her like you know was all that 100 percent oh. true because if if it's not and you can't prove it then then it's, you're it's liable for you know you're you're liable yeah you, know, you can be yeah, sued yeah. and and she said yeah no, it's 100 true like you know you can just google everything yeah personally i also felt like she's really speaking out of her heart mm -hmm. it didn't feel like it's a made-up uh, story um but there has been something about you editing your podcast in a certain way <laughs> so I, w i i wanted to ask you like do you edit your podcast much no i don't like to edit podcasts i'd like to just leave everything people said in because yeah i, I don't want them to criticize me for changing what they said so um, but you have been accused with um manipulating uh yeah. your episode yeah i mean i wish i had that skill level but no mm -hmm. everything everything in the pod the only things i edit out on the podcast are if someone says something and they misspeak and then they correct what they said yeah then okay. I, i delete that or if um like someone loses their train of thought i delete that because it's pointless uh any mistakes like if we take a break if there's like so some basically background you noise, edit yeah. out the brain farts yeah that's okay. it and even then i leave a lot of those in because mm -hmm. i just you know i want people to meet the real person Yeah, it's sort of, yeah, and the point of the podcast is to have, like, a continuous conversation and not not something super edited. Mm. It makes it more real and raw. But anyways, let's go through. Yeah, yeah so I want to go through, like, the timeline mm -hmm. of what happened with the podcast. Okay. So I think the first thing is that, obviously, on the podcast, when it was recorded, Nelly made, like, some really serious allegations against Rocco, against Mike Chapman, and against just porn producers in europe in general mm -hmm. um she also said good things like that the industry has improved a lot thanks to american productions oh and how did it improve um just in general i think you know there's less shenanigans with like having to fuck people to get work you know okay because it's not directors picking models anymore it's the companies themselves yeah so i think that's a good thing i think they have like someone on set it, on a lot of productions mm -hmm. um who's there to support the model at least in some capacity yeah bits so i've seen it i've witnessed it firsthand and my observation was that this model liaison in europe is just a friend of the producer being paid to do a job and it, they're not really making doing a good job there it doesn't think. look like an independent person that's there to look after the models interests. no it's it looks that like that person ticking. is yeah. often just part of the crew at uh, the group so. yeah I, when i witnessed it first and it was a very nice person but 
I didn't see any like looking out for the model's interests. Mm, yeah. Um, so I think that's where it might differ from America. But you know, how does a small American company manage their European production? But I, will, I think I'll get into that a bit later. Okay. Um, so yeah, she so, named a, a few concrete yeah, persons. And then I say afterwards, I checked that she was telling the truth. And I felt uneasy about publishing it. So I checked again by text uh, later, like okay. just before I published it. Like, you know, definitely all truthful, right? Just warning oh, so, you. So before publishing the podcast, yeah. you asked Nelly. Yeah, yeah. Just like, so cause I felt I didn't want to be offensive and say, like, are you lying? You know, because. Like, no, just like, double yeah. checking. Yeah. With the person. Yeah, just confirming. Because sometimes you do change your mind. Yeah. And, you know, you, people exaggerate and mm -hmm. misremember mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but the one thing that sticks in my head so much is that the quest on it, because I challenged her about the Rocco stuff on the podcast. I didn't just like be like, oh yeah, I completely agree with you. Yeah. I challenged her. And one of the things I said is, you know, why has nobody spoken out about it? Yes, I remember. And that. she said, you know, because they're fucking scared. They're shitting themselves. And in that case, she's talking about European porn models. Mm -hmm. she said you know if you speak out the you lose your agent you don't get work um it's you know the end of your career basically so she, she said there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and i also said so are you worried about what will happen when this if... podcast is published and, and she said no because you know i don't care i work for myself i work alone so she doesn't have an agent anymore doesn't have an agent, doesn't work for anybody, doesn't work for productions, only makes porn for herself. So she said she's not scared at so, all. Yeah, but that makes sense. That's why she came on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, that's why she felt, you know, able to speak freely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so yeah, so, you know, so bear, keep those things in mind. And then I published the podcast. And, you know, it started to go viral on TikTok. Um, it was getting a lot of talk. And on TikTok, how many videos have you shared from this podcast? I only shared three, but everything's been removed now. And how many views did you get on those? Um, I think the first one got about 600,000 or so. And then, That's a lot. Yeah. And um, I also had plenty of, plenty of female models respond. For, uh, and, European models? Yeah. And they agreed with Nelly. Okay. Um. Not everybody had the same criticisms as Nelly, but everybody had like part of it. Mm. So there was confirmation. Okay. Um, and yeah, and then obviously at some point Rocco saw it. And that's when things got really interesting. I'm not sure which bits to talk about first, but like Rocco contacted me and Nelly. On uh, the phone? I don't know if he called her, but definitely texted her um but i also had a phone call with nelly and the way she described it is she like had a nap in the afternoon okay and she woke up to loads of messages loads of people trying to get in touch with her okay not just rocco not just um but who else you're 100 i know that esther at bill babes uh contacted her okay um and uh, some other models? I think so. I think yeah, I mean, so. who else? Yeah. I, 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 she said um, other producers in the porn industry. Um, but I, the thing is, the phone call was really inconsistent with everything she'd said before. So, like, the was way... Was hectic. Like she, and she was, like, really saying, like, I'm not scared. But she was... When I spoke to her, she was, like, looking for a reason of course to, to delete it yeah to delete it so she was say she was trying to say that like because i'd made a clip of it when she, she she's seen my podcast she knows that i make clips of everything of course she knows she was saying because i made a clip of it that uh, it makes it look like she's attacking like at war with rocco and i'm like look mm -hmm. it's just what you said and she's like yeah but look at the words you've used and she was like obsessing over the description but then obviously i got a message from rocco um, and I can say what that said because I think it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, please do. Have you ever uh, spoken to Rocco before? No, this was the first time actually. Your first encounter. Yeah. 
And this was before or after you deleted the podcast, the episode? And this was before I deleted it. So before, before Rocco contacted me, um, obviously a few friends warned me that he would be. because <laughs> um, I mean... Because he was contacting friends to get my number and things like that. Okay. Um, one interesting thing is one person who who warned me well I don't want to say too much but one person that I spoke to said that whenever she speaks to Rocco she feels she has to be careful because he's a scary person I thought that was quite ominous sounding because not many people it's very rare that I've heard anyone just give a general fear thing like never done anything bad to me but just always feel you have to be careful. Um, you know, all I'm going to say is that he can be intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he contacted me. He said, hi, Tommy, this is Rocco Sifredi. I'm writing to you about your video with Nelly. Just want to let you know that I will unfortunately move on legally toward her and you. Because mm -hmm. many things that she says you report on writing below completely wrong or purposely um, and I hope you know that you can post anything people say just because so obviously so okay. that's reading exactly what he wrote obviously his English is unbelievably bad and I'll have to interpret interpret that a bit <laughs> <laughs> um well, i mean it's, it's just really difficult it's yeah it's kind of difficult to understand but we get yeah. the point we get the point yeah i think like first like this is not you know my first rodeo like i've been sued for libel before and when it happens you know the person doesn't say i'm taking legal action against you yeah, it's a they, bit threatening. The, you get the threats from the lawyer yeah <laughs> you know you get a cease and desist you get um you know you get asked for money you know but you know, this is this is a threat, the way I see it. This is someone trying uh, to intimidate me to take Intimidating, it yeah. Because um, why wouldn't he go to his lawyer, you know? And uh, I think the reason he won't go to his lawyer is because it brings more attention. Because I would love this to be in court. I would love to talk about this story. Yeah, but uh, obviously it's because first try, try the easy way, you know, just contacting you and, you yeah. know, shut it, shut it down. Yeah, and then um, he also included a screenshot of a message he had with um, Esther at Brill Babes. And what um, does it say? And the screenshot is a screenshot of the YouTube with and, uh -huh. um, highlighting, you know, the description. Okay, which is... Uh... Which is just a description of um, the allegations against Rocco that's in the video. It's a description of the video. Yeah. Um, is it problematic? It's a description of what the content is. like. So, so you didn't... Um... I didn't embellish. I didn't... Okay. You know, I just... I, I can't. It would be illegal to change you so know, what the content is. Mm -hmm. It is what it is exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and Esther sent Rocco a message saying, she said the whole story written to the video was made up. <laughs> and I'm like, That's strong. Yeah, I'm like, but... You know, the whole... Yeah. Like she, so why did she? And and she said she never told this. Um, oh, but she she did. A, and um, a laughing face emoji. Well, she actually did. And so why come on a podcast and tell all this story so that in the end you can say it wasn't true and delete it? Yeah, and so why did I, I invited Rocco to come on the podcast and oh, tell his side of the story? I had invited him previously when I first started messaging about it because I think that's fair. I it, think it, yeah, it um, is to give the chance and he said no i'm not looking for any defense from my side i don't need it good but for sure all your writing and the way you describe all the stories is absolutely made up from you uh, and the girl already confirmed by voice message and by chat i don't know what is behind this someone told me that dan leal is part of this when some past month with some other girls on another podcast shits on people anyway you must for sure know that Whatever you post on the web nowadays, you are responsible. Take care. Oh, take so, care. <laughs> so um, a few things in that. Like first, I just want to say like, you know, Dan Leo, I know him very well. He was on the podcast with me and you. Yes. And I think the podcast Rocco is talking about is when you gave Rocco some mild criticism for like not providing food and things like that. 
Mm -hmm. And Dan was defending him. So why he has beef with Dan, I have no idea. It's kind of ridiculous. Well, we don't... And he's seeing this, like, conspiracy. So I don't know why he has this, like, conspiracy in his head. And I don't know... Like, obviously, they haven't actually watched the podcast and looked at the allegations. They've just read the description. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, how would you say, like, oh, the girl said, like, Nelly said she didn't say any of these things. It's like, yeah. but that's Do what the video what is. Do you know what actually she said? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, it's really, really bizarre. And these are the things that made me angry. Um, like, one is that he just says he has no questions to answer. So... So why so, even bother? Yeah, so so for me, just the kind of person I am, that's made me dig into his content. Okay. And I'm going to force him to answer some questions. Um, and the second one is the focus is really on, like, making out, like, that Nelly didn't say this stuff. And I had a conversation with Nelly, and it was a very difficult conversation. At one point, she was angry with me angry with you Why? yeah she, i think she was looking for a way of deleting someone to it. blame she was looking for a way of deleting it she did she said like she didn't she said that like she didn't like the video of where it was a clip only of the allegations you know but that's how i promote all the podcasts you know i promote the full podcast and then i take like the highlights like into individual topics yeah, but, and publish mm -hmm. them but again i don't edit them i don't change anything people said and um you know she like had problems with the wording of the description and it, obviously it was all coming from the people who pressured her which was of course esther at brill babes who is not her agent and but was she she used to be a long time she ago used to be um but esther is not her agent okay why the fuck is esther working for rocco so what like, do you think esther is supposed to be a model agent her job is to look after the models, to take care of them, to get them work, to make them successful. Her job isn't to be an enforcer for producers who she doesn't work for, you know. She gets paid by it. She gets a commission yeah. on top of the model's fee. But you'd think that's dependent on the model, not dependent on the producer. Because, you know, if you've got a good model, like, the producer wants to has to book with you. Yeah. So, like what's the relationship between Rocco and Esther? It seems like a really big conflict of interest. It seems quite sinister. And the thing is, it's not an isolated incident. Like, she's well known for shutting down girls in the porn industry when they complain. Who? Esther? Yeah. Um, it happened with Lenina Crown, like, a few months ago. Lenina complained about um, Pierre Woodman. Yeah. Um, and real babes and she came under a huge amount of pressure to delete her tweets um and the but I, as i recall it was the same um sort of threatening with uh going uh you know with um co you know court and stuff yeah yeah it was all yeah it was all that like threatening legal action yeah legal action yeah okay and again people that threaten legal action usually for me, it's a sign of guilt. Like, it's obviously they're not... If if they were innocent, they would just go to a lawyer and say, fix this. Because but, it's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Well... But I mean, you know, make your own mind up. But, you know, my feeling is, you know, these are not the actions of, you know, people that don't have something to hide. You know, when you go to court, everything comes out in the wash. You know, so these are not yeah. people that want things to go to court. Well, I've also... And they can afford lawyers. Like, lawyers are not expensive in Hungary, no. even a good one. And Rocco has a lot of money. Um, and, yeah, it, it it's just unbelievable to me. Um, I lost my train of thought a little bit. But, yeah, on the Lenina thing, yeah, they were also threatening court. And it's there's this pattern. Like, just in the last 12 months, I've seen personally Esther shut down models complaining three times. And one of them, sadly, was with us. Yeah, it was like, the Paul Stalker uh, thing, mm, yeah. which, you know, maybe Paul has changed since. No, he hasn't. I've had <laughs> plenty of stories. He's still very abusive. But, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to 
be more vocal and just, you know, let other girls know in my opinion about him. And, you know, I've always, I would say I've always had a good relationship with uh, Esther. And so she obviously approached me, you know, to let's not do this like that, you know, yeah, I please remember. remove remove the post and and i have because i valued our our relationship with esther and she used a lot of like manipulative tactics i remember that she said like oh you know just because you know you don't you know need the money or whatever like other he's paying and yeah. other girls want that money and it's yeah so and do you remember what happened after it was very funny the um well, it turned it turned he, out that he, he, Paul wanted yeah. or did. Yeah, he tried start to steal his own own agency and steal Esther's uh, girls. I know. Yeah, and then she decided she didn't like him. But yeah, Esther confessed that. Yeah, it turns out he was an asshole. So. But yeah, and I don't really monitor social media so much with European performers because it just doesn't interest me. I'm kind of between projects at the minute, so I'm not super involved. But that's I've noticed three times in the last year of her acting as an enforcer. And it's so wrong. Like, can you imagine an American performer speaking out about a producer and her agent or another agent mm -hmm. shutting down the conversation, threatening her? Like, I don't know. Like, it's unbelievable. Mm. So, um, I mean, it, it's serious things they're speaking out about, like, you know, abusive behavior towards women. Yeah, and not to mention, like, really, uh, a lot of girls complain, but... Yeah, and, and like the Lenina one about Woodman, like, you can't even be sued for liable for reporting it, because so many people have made allegations against him, mm -hmm. including, like, Lana Rhodes... Yeah, um, I remember that. Like, Woodman's name has come up so many times in court documents over the LA, LA Direct. Um, I don't think it was a trial, but it was like some sort of inquest in okay. America. Like, you don't have to look very far to find out all the bad stuff about Pierre Woodman. It's like, it's known that he's a, a very bad, a very abusive person in the porn industry. Not to everybody, but yeah. to certain people um he has a terrible history i know for a fact that uh at least one agency will not send him models because of him abusing them could so, you could you name I, I don't want to it's not fair i don't want to associate a good agency with a bad story okay so it's just not fair on them there are good agents out there and there's bad agents mm -hmm. okay um and so what's yeah. what's next and so so yeah, and that, that's the thing. And it's like, I just think it's, it's all the time I've been in porn, we've known, we all know who the bad people are. There's not many of them. Like for the most part, I think the porn industry is like quite a hedonistic, fun, welcoming, supportive place. But we all know who these bad people are and no one ever speaks out against them. Or I thought they didn't. And I always thought, well, once models start speaking out, mm -hmm things will change and I've saw Nelly speak out like pour her heart out about all the bad things and she got shut down she was silenced yeah and it's so disgusting I always thought that I always kind of blamed the models thought oh why aren't European models as strong as American yeah, ones yeah. but American ones don't have to deal with this um so the, the courage it takes to speak out in Europe is tremendous huge mm -hmm. and then when you do i don't know what was said to her yeah we don't know like i but whatever threat it was it it was threatening it changed her. everything about her character and the threat clearly didn't come just from uh one person it came from multiple people all at once like a torrent and no one can deal with that pressure and you know this is you know a big man like bullying a small girl and like so you know i felt like a responsibility to you know to investigate yeah to step up and you know speak out myself because it, all the producers in budapest we all talk about this like we all 
like privately okay. I, i've had conversations with several producers and said like you know the fuck is happening with rocco you know like okay why, so, is, why is he still allowed to work so and, it's a thing yeah it's well known and, and i think there's two schools of thought one is that if you sp- i've been warned by some people that like look if you if you kick up a fuss then you risk having the industry shut down in budapest you know because okay. you would attract government attention maybe they'll say look this can't go on we'll shut the porn industry down we'll ban porn because that's what's happened in france like in france the porn industry got out of control and um many producers right now are in jail like awaiting trial producers and performers and that's for drugging girls sex trafficking tricking them into doing porn all sorts of vile things and um the things that are happening in budapest are different to that um i hope maybe there's some similarities i don't know enough about the french situation but um yeah the, the feeling in the industry I, a good number of people i spoke to they they feel that we shouldn't speak up because It's yeah, I would say business. it's a common thing. Like, it's not something you should do. It's better to lay low and, you know, just be happy if you have a job opportunity. Take it, you know, earn some money and that's it. Yeah, and, you know, I, I and um, like one UK British porn producer, he posted um, the podcast on the XBiz forum for me. Um, oh. like that's like an industry hub so like just yeah. only people that work in the business yes. and post on there i don't normally get too involved but i thought okay it's a good place to start posting and amazingly rather than you know take it seriously um xbiz deleted my account like the people who are supposed to be the porn industry media like they're all they're like the the business media the people that give awards to porn models did they warn you or anything nothing the account was just deleted so like that's it just shows that the porn industry as a whole is they prefer to keep stories quiet than to let them get out it's like just pretend wow. that there's no problem and it's so shocking it took a few days for it to sink in and like again that's why i'm making this podcast because and like because it was posted in there I don't think there's any doubt that people involved with Rocco, like either his distributors, like Evil Angel or Gamma Entertainment, um, some people at that company have heard about it and, and they've decided the... to take no action. They've ignored it. Nobody's contacted me. I've made myself available for contact. Um, they just deleted you? The, I, I was deleted from XBiz. I don't know at whose request. You know... Um, But do you think there's a connection between uh, Rocco and XBiz? Uh, maybe not necessarily be with Rocco directly, but um, obviously XBiz depend on Gamma Entertainment mm-hmm. and Evil Angel for huge amounts of sponsorship. Like without the porn companies, there is no XBiz. Yeah, sure. Right? They, they depend on sponsorship. So mm, I didn't know that, but that's um, a little yeah, bit Yeah, like even giving out their awards, you know, the awards, uh, you know, yeah you pay for them <laughs> you know, let's yeah let's be honest yeah uh, well i mean that's true of all industry awards you know i used to work in media in mainstream media before this and you so... know that's how we make money and it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing mm, um, it's like a social gathering and yeah and it, i think the awards generally go on merit but you know they go to sponsors okay um, so yeah and i wrote Obviously, the, and I want to talk about why I removed the podcast as well. Because I didn't have to delete the podcast. Um, like legally? Yeah, I could have left that up. Because Nelly mm-hmm. didn't say to me, I'm lying. She it was a very ambiguous call. Um, she was like l- going from excuse to excuse, like reason to reason to reason about why it should be deleted. Okay. And I was like, look, if you say you were lying, I'll delete it. And she's like, okay, I'm lying then. Oh. But it sounded just more that, desperate, that, you know. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, okay, I'll delete it. Don't worry. And I was like, but then I said, so, so is it true that Rocco punches girls in the face? It's like, yeah, that's true. Is it true? Uh, another thing, and every th- every specific thing I asked her, she's like, yeah, that's true. But so but so then like, she said, okay, so I'm, I'm like, lying. So, so I'm like, so are you lying or what? And it was like, it was a very confusing call. So like, I, I do think that 
obviously it is less credible because yes, of that. Yes, it is. But imagine when the Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein Me Too case was going on in Hollywood. Yeah, I remember that. So let's say an actress spoke out about Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. And then him and all his friends started contacting the person to harass them. Scary. Into not into removing their comments like that would be so wrong it's like i'm pretty sure that happened yeah, well, it, it happened we've got evidence of it yeah, happening yeah, yeah. he sent me a screenshot yeah. showing that someone contacted her um it's wrong yeah so i wrote about that and i thought you know i'll write about why i deleted it because i i don't want to lose my own credibility by like making it look like i just of put course. out shit on people that's not true but did you also delete it uh, because uh because of Nelly, I deleted it because I deleted it because I didn't want her to be in any danger, and I don't. I take that to be like anything. I don't know. Yeah, we what, just. I don't. I'm not saying that they threatened her like physically or something, but just in case someone did, then you don't want to be. Uh, yeah, I wanted mm -hmm. to delete it. So I'd rather people threaten me than threaten her. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, um, yeah, and then amazing thing happened. I was having a nap of my own. Why do they always call when you're having a nap? Because you're the most vulnerable. Yeah, and... Um, it's te I, telepathy. Yeah, the great thing about working from home is nap time. Mm. So? Um, so then Brill Babes called me. Like, this is after I've taken it down, you know? Like, they've won, you know? The, the, yeah, the podcast is down. Yeah. So why so antagonize what, uh, me? what else why? to say? Okay. So um, she calls me and it was a crazy phone call. Obviously, I, I think the intention was to, you know, try and get me to take down my posts, try and get me to understand that, you know, what you you're know, doing don't, is don't wrong. make the industry look bad, you know, all, all this stuff. But, but Yeah, but, you know, don't make the industry look bad. But if it's, you know, rotting from the inside, then it is bad. Yeah, and I wasn't very civil, to be honest, because my opinion on this is well, that but she should not be contacting me. Okay. I don't want anything to do with her. I have nothing to do with her. And whenever she said something publicly and incriminated herself, I, I would write about it or post it. Okay. But nothing I've said about her is not, you know, in the public domain. It's not like I have a vendetta against her. Um, but... She seemed to think I do have, you know. It's so, but uh, the point of her contacting you was... Uh, yeah, I think it was to, to get me to... To step back, you know? Or? I think so, yeah. Okay. She, she kind of like... She said she's uh, warning me at one point, but she stepped back from but like But she didn't any... uh, explain? No, no. No, not really. It was, but I, I was quite aggressive on the call, though, so... Okay. I didn't really give her a chance to, you know, to properly warn you. <laughs> no, like, and I'm not easily intimidated by anyone, so it's I'm, I'm not like a strong person, but I'm not scared of anyone. Okay, it's just like good. And and thing is, like I said, I'm a lot of people in the porn industry that would want to speak out. They depend on other people for their income, and I'm quite lucky that I don't need anyone in the porn industry for my income so. yeah you're independent yeah because mm -hmm. i know one person is very good and tries behind the scenes to put things right but he can't speak out publicly because he depends on yeah but but nelly said she she yeah and look what happened to nelly she said she's independent herself so i don't know what happened But oh my god, I wish we knew. Something serious I must have happened. Knew. Yeah. Okay. We might never know. We'll probably never know. Yeah, but who knows? Um, so yeah, so like I think ultimately we have to forget what Nelly said a little bit. Um All right. and um I decided like let's look into Rocco myself. And you know, I searched for about five minutes before I found stuff that was so horrifying like i found it so personally upsetting to see that because you know i've seen his porn before but you just flick through i've never really like watched it from start till end yeah. and in my personal opinion um when i was looking through there's so much evidence of 
all the things, all the rumors that we hear, let's call them rumors. Yeah, let's. Yeah, when okay. someone, even though friends have made direct allegations about him, they don't want to be public. So you have to say it's a rumor. Okay. But it's always like the same rumors, you know. And uh, it's just it's just like this common knot that everybody, everybody knows what Rocco does. Everybody in porn knows what Rocco does. And when you say it took you five minutes, is it a long time or a short time? Short time. Okay. I thought I was going to have to spend like days like researching. Or go into the dark web. And I just typed in a few keywords and like Rocco porn crying or something. Okay. And I found like evident, like just video evidence of um harassment like uh, sexual harassment in terms of harassing someone into doing something sexually they don't want to do okay now i don't know if that's rape or not i'm not a lawyer um i definitely saw evidence of i would say attempted anal rape um and some things that might be rape might not be i don't know but certainly very abusive behavior so you would say it's um like totally disturbing it was so di disturbing and upsetting like so um, it's not something you would say like you just you're not into his stuff no it goes no. beyond your personal like you know what you prefer yeah and it's more than that it's like you know i produce like i filmed what okay i'm not a huge producer or anything i'm quite a small player in the porn industry but yet i've made you know like 300 or so porn videos and i know how it works i know yeah and i've worked with i know the models that he works with we all work with the same people and i just know that in a lot of these videos there is no possible way of getting consent for what he's doing it's just not possible mm -hmm. um and I, i've clipped a few of the videos and i found these so quickly there's so many more out there um but i mean he's been yeah. around for what 20 years mm. so of course there's a you know yeah, an I, endless yeah I, I saw like a few old ones immediately and then i grabbed um a few modern ones at random i, I've, I haven't put all of them public because um, some of them are people who have spoken to me anonymously and I don't want to yeah. expose them. Um, so? So yeah, I thought I, I want to just play them and just um, talk people through. What's happening? Yeah. Okay, so shall we put on our mics? Yeah, let's put headphones on. Ah, headphones. So um, uh, uh, there's no way I can put these videos on YouTube. They're, no, of course like, not. Like even if I censor them, they're so disturbing and... I just don't think it's the so right place. So we just do the voice. To... Yeah, so, but I, I've m changed my Twitter profile, which is Ask Lustcast. I've changed it so that my tweets are marked as sensitive. Um, if you're triggered by, you know, abuse and um, possible rape and things like that, then just don't watch them. Um, but if you want to just see the videos and make up your own mind, then go to my Twitter. It's the pinned tweet and... Everything I find will be using the hashtag Rocco Files. Um, and yeah, this, let's play the first one. And this first one's taken from a website I found called eFucked. And eFucked is like a porn comedy site. Yeah. Where I they, so. they basically look for clips of like behind the scenes in porn where the girls are humiliated and then laugh at them. Um, so it's a like a the, mocking. Yeah, a lot of the humor is like racist or misogynist. Mm -hmm. um, and this first video, they're just laughing at the girl because she doesn't want to do porn. So I haven't made these edits. Um, someone else has made the edits for comedy effect, if you can call that comedy. And um, yeah, I, I want to talk us through it. So what's happening here? Like, so with porn obviously a lot of things are staged and faked but this girl doesn't speak english and that's really important like her english is very bad yeah you can see that there's not a lot of understanding no. of what she's saying there's no way she's acting that because like you can hear her english you can see you can see her in her eyes she's not understanding 
Um, yeah, but you can see she doesn't want to be there. She doesn't want to be there. Yeah, like that's... And, but the reason I say the English thing is because you could say that, okay, it's She not didn't real. say no. It's or, like, that's part of the script. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, it's just that's the fantasy. No. But like, um, and it, absolutely it's not. Um, I don't, I couldn't find this video published anywhere. So it does look like some sort of outtake or behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I, she seems, she doesn't look like she wants to do porn. Like I, I would have big question marks over, um, over whether she even agreed to be on film. Like, did she sign the model release at the end or before? Like what happened? But like, I think, you know, most of the times those model releases are in English to begin with. That's true. And, you know, just from my experience, no one really encourages you to read it. Mm -hmm. They just say like, oh, just, you know, sign here. And Even then, now? Um, nowadays it's better. Mm. Nowadays it's better. But, you know. Because um, th this girl, like... And, he, you know, just, just sign here, you know, that's it. And you just do as you're told. And, and like the first crime, like she says, no, I don't want to see you naked. Yeah, I know. And it's like, and she seems afraid, you know, this is watching. This is so uncomfortable. It's very me. uncomfortable indeed. Um, and should I play on or any more thoughts or? I'm just thinking, um, so there's possibly someone who is pushing her. Possibly. To could do be, that because. Could be a boyfriend, could be an agent. Whoever, but. Someone. I don't think she's there because uh, it was her idea, you know. It, it looks like um, she hasn't decided to do porn yet. And. Yeah. Like no. if we watch further, um, it gets so bad. So for people listening, he's kind of forcing his penis into the girl's mouth. Yeah. And she doesn't want it. She really doesn't want it. It's, there's no way she wants this. It's so And she's wrong. looking away. That's like a very typical sign. It's. I just want to stop there because like <laughs> you know just... it's just so uh, it's so uncomfortable it's like why would you even want to go would you keep on going? with this yeah. it's uh, what's the point you're pushing someone to have sex that doesn't want to have sex and you're pushing someone to be on film having sex that doesn't want you know, it's, you're just, we're watching someone just be traumatized in front of us. It's like. Uh, for sure she is. Like. For sure. There's no, there's no way. And also it's uh, very sad that these people make uh, fun of it. Like, I don't find it funny at all. And the people editing this. Yeah, the people who, know, who edit it. Know that this is non-consensual. Mm -hmm. and they're editing the music in to like make light of that i know you, know? you can Very, see that's what their opinion is it's really wrong um but not everyone knows because i've met some people who shared a very disturbing video with me mm -hmm. and being like saying like who the hell would do that and stuff like how did they do it and i'm like but have you thought of maybe uh them being drugged or you know threatened or mm. you know like obviously they are not doing it out of fun and then they were like oh yeah maybe you know yeah well let, let's watch some of the pressure that Rocco okay. puts on this girl so it, it, she's lying near his penis looking very uncomfortable what kind of question is that i'm like but why would you ask something like that in in the middle of a porn movie why would you ask it of any girl you don't know like that's ha have you been abused as a child it's like like possibly i mean looking at her it's like she doesn't want to have sex and he's trying to like blame it on like oh you must have been abused as a child because you don't want to fuck me i don't know really weird it's 
unbelievably bad and like this isn't scripted this is no it's this not is, this is horrific but no but that's like really something like just in in terms of just common decency i've never heard of any even someone trying to be offensive i've never heard someone being say in a, such a vulnerable position as she is in already incredible yeah it's yeah it's really amusing and somehow it gets worse Are you strange? She don't have sex. Yeah. So she was saying, like, what will people say? Yeah. It, she doesn't want to do porn, and you can't get any consent with this level of English. May mm. And then this, like, forcing her to do a yeah. blow job, and it is forcing. It is. Yeah. Did he come in her mouth? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. She's completely traumatized. How can you ask that? She 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 can't even talk. No. But... You know, I uh, I find it weird when he asks like are you on drugs? Maybe he tried to you know like put it on her like well, that's why she's acting weird yeah. because she's a drug addict or something. It's like oh she cuz every girl wants to have sex with Rocco. Everyone like why is it if a girl says no it means there's something wrong with her? No, it just means she means no. Like, fuck off. Oh my god. But I would describe this as sexual assault. Like, now, is there a possibility that it could be staged? Uh, my professional opinion is no. Yeah. Like, having worked on scenes, when you're working with someone, if you're working with someone that speaks English, mm -hmm. I think you could stage it. But then, if, why would you do it? Very uh, for, for people that have that kind of sick, uh, kind of like, like rape fantasy. Okay, I could understand doing it for but that you, I, reason. I, I, but but you would need to have such good communication and a really good script, and you'd have to talk through like every little movement. Yeah, I couldn't see any porn company I know putting that much effort in. No, me neither. And um, you can see this is real. Like I just know. My professional but opinion is he's being very casual too about it. Like just no, no empathy. Yeah, you know, it's like so. Did you like it or not? And like, yeah. what are you talking about? It's almost like he doesn't even see her suffering. It's not not even like he's enjoying the suffering. He just doesn't notice it. You know, maybe could it be that he witnessed such behavior so many times that he became immune to it? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Because we are shocked. So yeah. So, you know, maybe it's... And okay, there's like all this comedy music. It's very, it, very bad. So this is the next one. This is a recent one. Yeah. And I picked it out because I attended a dinner where this porn model was present. Oh. And I found it impossible to communicate with her. Her English was so bad that it wasn't possible to have even a basic conversation like, oh, what are you having for dinner? What are you choosing? Do you like it? Is it nice? It wasn't possible. Wow. Um, the second reason I picked this one out is um, obviously the rumors, let's say, that we all hear about Rocco are that he books a lot of girls for just a blowjob scene and then he pushes them to get more from them, that he'll try and um, have sex and anal sex um against their will let's say um is the rumor mm -hmm. and i picked this video out because it's he says that on camera because i think he's so used to doing it that he's not even hiding it and um i, I made these clips myself um so yes they are edited but i've linked to the full video so okay. you can see the entire context So you can see that I'm not just taking things out of context. So like, I'll start with the first clip yeah. at the beginning. I clipped that out because it's like, um, he, it's like, oh, she likes hard sex. So now I have to change the scene type and fuck you. I mean, and, you know, maybe it's an option. And it's like, okay, this could be staged, but I'd like to know, um, did you tell her it's going to be a sex scene before? You said that or was it a spontaneous thing that mm. if the rumors are true happens quite a lot you know and 
it seems like it's like this is always happening to me and it's like yeah yeah that's what the rumors say as well, well. um from personal experience i have also attended a blowjob scene and it was only a blowjob scene mm. so from you know like watching this i assume this was also booked as a blowjob scene but open for discussion yeah well like i say um interesting thing about rocco is he likes to film without cuts so he likes yeah. it to be from beginning to end mm -hmm. with no cuts in this video i from memory there's no cuts um from beginning to end so and she speaks really bad english remember like you can see that she's just nervously laughing yeah doesn't not particularly aware of what's going on i don't i i don't really think she she even hears what he's saying she seems to understand a few things like she was able to say that she understood hard sex and yeah she was able to say that she so, likes so there is some yeah. some consent yeah but is there consent to having sex i'm not so sure she does seem nervous from the nervous uh, yeah, laughing true and this is a little bit ahead there was no yes there was no yes she never said yes no but do you think it's because she but didn't understand or she was just not sure i don't she's just nervously laughing all the time i know uh, giggling all the way because she doesn't know what to do she doesn't speak english her english is very bad and rocco's english is also extremely bad so, <laughs> like when, when i shoot porn um with a model that doesn't speak good english i tend to book it as a threesome and the oh. second model will speak her That's language mm -hmm. if not i'll sometimes have an interpreter um i've only ever shot a boy girl scene with a girl once without without anyone present and um, we had to use google translate and it, it i found it so difficult to communicate that i felt it was best to cut the scene short okay because it, it just uncomfortable yeah it, yeah, it, it like, just felt like this isn't this isn't the best way to do things okay and it was just you know a problem that you know the translator didn't show up that day you know so um so yeah but let's go to the next clip yeah so but they already had vaginal sex oh so he tries to put his penis in her ass yeah but she didn't say yes she never said yes even if she said yes she, she can change still her say mind. no yeah and he yeah, just he yeah. just tries to like she doesn't even know the word ass or anal you know or maybe yeah he was like you know trying to do this but but you said yes you know like yeah he's pressuring this, her yeah like pressuring like, but like we've got a deal yeah like and i already shot shot some of it you know like there's no going back and this is like a classic like kind of manipulation like kind of rape scenario mm -hmm. cliche of like mm -hmm. but you said yes so so what's wrong so you're like you can't say no now but like you can't tease me yeah okay um, um she she looks uh stressed here she's been nervous through the whole yeah, thing yeah but I now i can see she's genuinely scared for her ass he just tried to put his she's, penis she's like, in her ass no no <laughs> yeah like it's a surprise uh-huh i don't do that it's a huge amount oh of pressure. and she sa he says you lied to me mm, fuck you oh so uncomfortable so much pressure yeah and this is a very young girl i believe she's about 20 something. 18 to 20 and they try to he just tried to anally i think that's like attempted anal rape like he just tries to put it in even though she keeps saying no yeah like, there's no there. way of describing that in any other yeah, time i mean yeah it is what it is you can watch for yourself <laughs> it's so uh, disgusting it's mm. like just the tip what is that like he said not a not, like wait. no isn't a negotiation but he said i'm not gonna put it in just the tip yeah so what's the point i mean i know what's the point but yeah. It's not even a discussion at this point. And he said, you lied to me. You lied to me. It's yeah. like, and it's, fuck it's, very, you. it's such a strong statement. Mm. Like you lied to me. She doesn't even know, you know, what time of the day is. And like I said, this is like a muscular, quite And tall. look at her. She's, she's being completely, you know, in a, how do you call this situation? Like vulnerable as hell. 
Yeah, and I also want to say that like when someone says they like hard sex or they like rough sex, that's such a wide term. You better not say it. It it, it, it means so many things. Yeah. You should get consent for every activity. Like it gets there's more. Well, of course she she haven't. She she was booked for a blowjob, right? Yeah. She's booked for if you if you want anal, why don't you book her for anal? But that's also not true. Even if she saw let's say even if she saw his scenes they don't necessarily end up with sex at all. So why would she know yeah, this is it, what she's signing up for? Come but on. also the, do you know who I am? Is like, it's like, it's like a threat. Yeah, it's, it's like, like and this is what I've heard in the rumors. I, I've heard in the rumors that, I'm calling them rumors. Yeah, but, call them rumors. Um, is that when you do a scene, you don't have any contact with him until the scene starts. But before the scene, one of his assistants tells you, you can't say no to him. For real? Yeah. From, from the rumors, of Yeah, course. but like, what? Well, clearly there's no consent or talking about know, the scene before. For real? That's what people say. Yeah, but... And that, he, that you're prepped that he's a very important person. He's very famous. It's good for your career. It's bad for your career if you say no. He doesn't like it when people say no. I mean, like that's, excuse you. That's like... The rumors. That's the rumors. And matches with the parts of the rumor that match with the evidence that i find is that the see that this it's just a blowjob scene like there's no talking yeah. through what's going to happen because if the, if he had contact with her before he could say you know what we'll do a sex scene we'll do an anal scene or like you know check on on the website you know if the girl does anal before you book her she said she doesn't do anal. So on so, the website, it would have not said anal. So what did they discuss? So he's pushing the, someone that doesn't do anal into yeah. doing anal. But di but do you think he discussed it with the agency? I very much doubt it. Because if he did, what did he say? You know, why, why doesn't she know? Did the agent not tell her it's an anal scene? Mm. It's, it's not, it's a blowjob scene. Yeah. And she's having sex on a blowjob scene. So again, like how many times does... does so she, she has, has to, to say, say no before it becomes well, harassment. Well, un until she does it, I guess. But it's sexual harassment. Like, you have to treat it like any other job. Like, this is a job. She's not his girlfriend. Um, she's not a lover. Um, yeah, it's, it's a job. It's a job. And, and um, mm -hmm. if I'm your boss and I'm like, Kiara, let's have sex. And you're like, no. Yeah, like, I don't have to. I can't just keep pressuring you for sex. Yeah. it's that's sexual harassment and in porn it's you but you can't, know, it's not okay just because it's porn but you know what the common sense is i mean i guess it's that you know if you're a slut or if you do porn don't be surprised if you get fucked you know that's what people think yeah. not in america and not in the uk i mean good and but uh, i think not legally anywhere in the eu yeah but it's um wow so he even confirms. She even says no. <laughs> oh, now he understands. He should not be allowed to do porn. He just shouldn't be. Like, it's, there's so many things wrong with this, just professionally speaking, that are just completely unacceptable. And much of it is a crime for me. Much of it. So can we say she was lucky? She didn't get fucked at the end. Like, did, did she get paid for a blowjob scene or did she get paid for I, sex? I, I am dying to know. And what do you think? Because I don't know. I don't know if he does, if he just books for a blowjob because um, I don't know if he's having money troubles. I don't know. Maybe his porn's not as popular as it used to be. I don't know. Who knows? No idea. Or like maybe that's a game. Maybe it's a something he gets off on is like Good. getting more from the girl. I don't know. I don't know what the mentality is. Mm -hmm. but well, I, I guess, yeah, the surprise element. Yeah, so that was um, video two in Rocco Lovely. Files. Should we do video three? Yeah. So just for people listening, this in this one, the it, it seems to be some sort of casting environment. It's quite chaotic. Yeah. There's lots mm -hmm. of people around, and uh, he opens the door to her like already naked, and she like pulls a funny face, um, like something like that. I can completely see being staged, like. Yes. Um, yes. Whether it is or not, I don't know. But obviously, 
you've got to like check certificates, things like that. So so it's not their first first encounter. Yeah, I would say not. But let's just continue the video. So scene starts. She's giving a blowjob, and he's asking for anal sex. He should know all this before the scene starts. So again, he should know what he's what she's booked for. Like every model you book, you know, like. Do they do facials? Do they do cream pies? Like where, you know, where is okay to come? So like he's asking her, do you like sperm? And she's like, no. And it's like, okay, I guess that's like maybe sex talk or something. I don't know. But, mm-hmm. um, it, and it's like, I want to fuck your ass. Like it's always with the ass, all the, always the anal stuff. Yeah, but like, that's his brand. Then book girls that do anal. But that's not exciting. Well, it's rape to have anal sex with girls <laughs> that don't want to do anal <laughs> like this but i guess many people get off um uh, from seeing girls being scared but you know most girls do do anal like in, but in that's Europe. not fun to fuck someone anally if she knows how to i guess you know yeah but it, it might just be she doesn't want anal with him who knows but if you want anal book an anal scene pay enough money to make it interesting <clears> for <throat> her <clears throat> maybe she will if the money's right you know so she says no to rimming yeah so again it's like this consent issue so he licks her ass and she doesn't like it but if there's rimming why not say there's rimming before the scene starts like are you okay with rimming yeah like receiving or maybe giving or, mm-hmm. like where is when is this conversation happening but like i say all the rumors say there's no talk about consent before you do a rocco scene and in the videos but it's true i i've never had a talk like that with him oh really no it's like common sense you know what happens happens so <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's just it shouldn't be like that i i, I i'm i'm used to that yeah I, this is how i know my industry it's just mm. you know it's lately like checking uh yeah boxes. it's a recent thing because of the girls do porn thing yes and um i you know for me it was new i'm like okay yeah you know? but it should be like this and uh, but it's a, and rocco is an extreme case but if we continue okay so mm-hmm. he asks us three times if he can fuck her hard and he doesn't say can i fuck you hard no just if he you says like. do you like it she doesn't understand any of the words yeah her english is almost non-existent yeah and yeah, I can she see. just looks awkward and goes, "Hmm, mm-hmm. like, that's not yes or no. It's just like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he didn't. She didn't say you can do it. There's no consent there whatsoever for hard fucking. He's fucking her harder, slapping her the back. Why slap slap the back? I don't know. And now you can see she's like breaking down in tears. She's really upset, and she's. The girl's crying her eyes out. I thought you liked it. Bullshit. Complete lie. And then, yeah, saying sorry, that makes it okay. I think it's part of the manipulation. Mm, Possibly. You know, it's like... uh, It's classic, like, abusive behavior, isn't it? Like, he understands you, you know, but then... And it's like, oh, her, yeah. her, and it's almost like, yeah, he's it's like, her fault. Yeah, it's not your fault. Up. You didn't say stop. So, yeah. like, she doesn't understand. Uh, and she, and, and gir- girls like, are intimidated. They don't, they don't, oftentimes they don't dare to say stop, no. you know? And Rocco is famous. He is a celebrity. Yes. Um. Yeah, I, this one's over now. So that was number three. Yeah, that was number three. So let's do number four. So this is Rocco Files number four. Yeah, for humor reasons, this site paired this with a video of a girl being raped, by the way, just to put this in context. So they took a clip from a movie mm-hmm. where it's a girl being raped because oh. she, the girl says yes earlier and then she says Changes no. And he's mind. like, you can't lead me on and then rapes her. So this is what passes for humor. This website is advertising it as like how to harass a girl into anal sex that's actually what the um the clip says it says this is how to harass an 18 year old into doing anal lovely like 
And this site, Efuct, they're a partner of Rocco's and oh. Gamma Entertainment. So they give them money to advertise their scene like this. Like, Are you for real? <laughs> yeah. Why would you want... Because they're one of the most popular sites there is. They, they provide a huge amount of traffic. He makes a lot of money from having this scene advertised like this. Um, and now we're into the scene. So we've got like a very pretty young blonde girl. Yeah. So that was Rocco just trying to fuck her in the ass, mm -hmm. even though she's saying no. And yeah. count how many times she says no um, in this video. It, it, it's mind-blowing. It's impossible. Yeah. I mean, this is just... Like, I, I, I would call this rape. Like, I would call this anal rape because, like, there's... It's such a bad example. Let's see. No anal. Yeah, if people that didn't hear that, it's like, please give me your ass. No. Okay, okay. I won't say please anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. I mean, like, that's... That's just so bad. And it's out there it's just like a normal porn video how that works i mean it makes you feel sick really yeah like, yeah yeah. It, just, it, it is very very disturbing it's just horrible she doesn't want it she's never said yes once she's scared so she's asking him to take his dick out of her ass please and he's refusing he said no i and can't i cannot like people think that rape is like this violent crime, but I think more often than not, it's like this. Yeah, is my you're impression. Right. Like this, so disgusting. He won't take it out because he enjoys it too much. Maybe he enjoys it because she doesn't enjoy it, and he's forcing her. It's just <laughs> so. I mean, consent? Anybody? No, no consent. It's just impossible. It's that's no consent. No, and and. And this is, like, I don't know if this video is still online. I don't know if, like, they've removed it because I couldn't find the name of this model. Okay. But for all I know, it's still on his website being sold right now. And it's the most extreme example I found of, like, the others are all non-consensual for sure. But this one is the one that I would just describe as rape. It's just anal rape, you know? Like, she's agreed to... That was very yeah very bad she's much. agreed to vaginal sex she's been booked for vaginal sex she's been paid for vaginal sex and he's raping her ass yeah there's so and, so and nobody no like i did this in five minutes and nobody no journalist in italy that like that writes about him regularly could like find could find this you know like i don't get it this is another one it's video five she doesn't need to give you a reason i mean look at her face yeah. it's just thoughts Similar to the last. I mean, one. I, I, all I can say is I know how much anal hurts. Yeah, and imagine when you don't want it. And yeah, when you don't want it, it's. I mean, me and Rocco, we also tried to have anal, but it didn't work out, mm. and he listened to me, so he did not. Yeah. Push. So, I think the thing is that people that do crimes like this, I think they pick their victims like they know who they can get away oh, with it definite. and who they can't yeah now someone like i don't know what like how they pick exactly but somehow they know somehow they know i guess um the girl has to be sort of uh unexperienced the beginner in the industry yeah Maybe beginner, maybe bad English seems to be a really common theme. It's good, yeah, bad like, English. Maybe like if they speak really bad English, you can hold your hands up and go, oh, but I didn't, I thought everything was okay. But let's take like just a short break because we can take the headphones off now. Okay. And that was a lot to watch. <laughs> just mentally. The thing that shocks me is that the abuse is so brazen. It's just out, it's just filmed, edited and published as if that's just Rocco and yeah they say no one complains but we know when they do the agencies and other people in the industry shut them down to mm -hmm. protect themselves yes we know that um the expis community has shut me down from speaking about I, it yeah so and um, trying to fix it within the industry because I think that the people that can fix it you know the fastest are the industry. It'd be 
very easy for us to stop yeah from the inside yeah my mind's still blown i've seen those videos a few times now me too but they still shock me like and i just feel so bad for the girls like because you know that i've I'm unlucky that I know like quite a few girls in my life that have experienced types of rape and like it affects every part of their life. Like once they've experienced something like that, it's not that they'll never be the same again, but maybe there's just like a version of them before and a version of them. Yeah. It it never goes, goes away. And I, I just, the fact that, that was done just to make a few dollars on a dvd you know it's yeah i guess it makes him uh, unique and it's done it's like anal rape on an industrial scale it's like victim like new potential victims sent to him every day every week yeah i I don't know how often he's shooting i think every week definitely every week for many many decades so what were we trying to prove here yeah so i think i just wanted to set out some evidence that the things that nelly said are are definitely true um even if i've deleted her podcast i think like i'd make like to personally make allegations of abuse against um against rocco now so, you know, obviously I'll wait to hear from Rocco's lawyer. Yeah. Um, but honestly, my feeling is that if, say, people look at it, some lawyers or people in the industry, um, you know, a court or whatever judge looks at that and says that that's not abuse, then I will just quit the industry and yeah. I'll become an anti-porn campaigner because... If that's acceptable, then I don't want any part of porn. And I think that we shouldn't be making it. And and it's better to ban it because if that's what people can expect from porn and if that's what we're teaching people, because men at home are watching this and and this is acceptable. And they're not being told, oh, this is acting. This is just staged. They're actually watching a man rape a woman and anally anally rape a woman and then be hero worship for it yeah he's like, he's been a he's role a cele- model for he's many ce- jurex uh, he's in advertising campaigns for jurex like jurex who were like campaigning for safe sex are using all they had to do is google for five minutes and they'd see his abusive behavior they'd see him anally raping girls um or, or trying to in a lot of cases and like where's their due diligence like they couldn't find a better role model for safe sex than Rocco Sifredi really yeah you know I don't know what can I say perhaps you know a lot of money play a big role in it well he's so famous in Italy and you know journalists you'd think journalists would be able to use Google a little bit like but, but maybe they think this is okay. Yeah, maybe honestly, maybe they know. Like maybe they I, think it's all, it's okay. I, I lived in Italy for one year, and it's a much more macho culture, mm. like a much more male dominated culture okay. than like Britain or America. Um, women's rights are definitely like in terms of women's rights are protected, but in terms of like attitude, mm-hmm. I'd say it's much more sexist. At least when I was there, it's like been nearly ten years now. Um, uh, and I know like many men like hero worship Rocco. Many men also don't. Like, I've spoken to quite a few of my okay. Italian friends and some of them hero worship him and some of them are like, yeah, I don't like his stuff because it's it's rapey. So the thing is, maybe it's just the thought of, you know, like that's his style and yeah, it's all right. And I'm sure they would say, but, all these girls probably signed a contract so what's wrong with that you know yeah possibly and it could be just like you say the sex worker thing like it's just sex workers you know just yeah i mean just bitches yeah like what you're selling say. your body so what do you expect to be treated fairly 
Yeah, possibly. Possibly. But I mean, you know, the legal system, I don't think, sees it that way. So, so even if someone signed a contract, it doesn't mean, uh, you know, yeah, you can be forced into stuff. So, um, so yeah, um, so yeah, I think, I think I want to talk about a few things that need to happen to fix okay. this. Um, good. And I think the ideal situation would be like the fastest way of fixing it would be if you know agent stop sending him models um and agents that do send models to him the rest of the industry could stop using like that would be like just a fast way of easing him out mm -hmm. um the second thing i thought of is like mind geek um, who own pornhub and a lot of the big sites and web group who own like legal porno and penthouse i think um and x videos like they could remove his content, like stop working with him, stop promoting him, or like cut him off financially. So as an industry, we can do that very easily. Yeah. Um, then there's um, Rocco's distributors. Okay. So that's like Evil Angel and Gamma Entertainment. Right now they're accepting this, but I guess like I don't understand. Like someone at their company are watching his videos and they're allowing this you know like who's allowing it whose decision is this like who who like in in their affiliate department who's managing the affiliates that says okay this affiliate efuck they're giving us a lot of money like are they not looking at, like maybe they don't maybe they don't but i don't know like i know if they were sending them fraudulent traffic they'd be blocking them very fast you know so like you do ma affiliate managers do manage the affiliates they do monitor them they meet you you meet your affiliates and buy them dinners you know like yeah well maybe as i said maybe it's just accepted like that being the you know yeah. like the rocco thing like it's hardcore and if you don't like it don't watch it you know so yeah like um i guess like Gamma Entertainment, they really need to remove Rocco's mm -hmm. content. They need to stop working with him or, or um, you know, they need to investigate it, find out if what I'm saying is true. I mean, there's video evidence well, yeah, of it, but so it shouldn't take Yeah, but also find out, find out if uh, the things Nelly said were true because she, she, so, yeah. she said um, some other things. Yeah. So yeah. how ca how can we find out if it's true or not? And what did she say? I don't recall. What did she say? Where? How does she know that those things happened? Um, she said there's videos, but like I said, I, I searched for crying and Rocco. Like, you know, I have to do my job as well. Like, not just do this. So I I didn't like. Sp I, I spent about five or ten minutes looking for videos of. Yeah, I know, but she said something about. Uh, punching punching yeah. dislocated jaw and implant so like how how can we yeah i you'd need to see behind the scenes footage for something like that i don't you wouldn't be able to publish um a video of that there has been rumors mm -hmm. about girls ending up in uh, hospitals because of uh raptured uh anuses and uh, stuff that's not a rumor um like, that's not a rumor no no there's a documentary that i saw and rocco uh i think jewel models were in in the like julia from jewel models was speaking and one of their models had to go to the hospital because she had a torn labia um now i don't know if that's just an injury like i mean rough sex you can have injuries yeah um i don't know if that's been being too rough or not i don't know if like because you know some girls that we know um including at her agency love rough sex and you know jewel models are one of the good ones um so i'm not making any criticism of them um but yeah in the documentary yeah so it's, what, it's doc documentary. what documentaries i don't remember the name of it but i'll link to it when i find it but, there's not many documents yeah but also there were stories about i mean rumors uh, exactly about the anuses being uh, you know hurt well i think I think I wouldn't criticize that personally because like doing anal sex, you are at risk of prolapse. That's just how it is. And and there are videos of anal prolapses happening. 
Yeah, but I'm not talking about prolapse, but when it's like... Yeah, one of the videos I saw was um, Rocco tear tearing a girl's anus. Um, so it was like a little bit of blood. Um, but again, it's anal sex, so yeah. he's not a small guy. But I just think if you're doing anal, that's a risk. What are your thoughts on uh, stepping on someone's head or face? If it's consensual, it's fine. Um, if it's not, no. But yeah, and I think the main thing is like just looking at ways we can stop it. So like, another way, and I, I think, you know, if gamma entertainment, if, um, if, evil angel if they don't take action to you know then someone has to so yeah like who is going to i like rocco's sponsors and companies and brands he advertises and he has relationships with are they going to cut ties um i i don't know the other thing that i don't understand is that i, I i'm really familiar with gamma entertainment and I know that they treat this stuff really seriously. Okay. Like when I believe Brie Mills was accused of not monitoring one of the people that worked for her and he was me too quite a lot and they took action so fast and so serious and um, people lost their jobs, it was investigated, um, controls were put in place to tighten things up. Like very, They took it very, very seriously. Okay. So I don't understand why they're not taking it seriously in Europe. So I don't know if like Europe's, if there's problems in how they manage things in Europe. I don't know if because it's Europe, you can get away with more. So they don't mm -hmm. care or there's no consequence in Europe. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think it's quite clear that it's being monitored better in the US and in the UK. Yeah, and like the girls speak out if there's a problem in America, but in Europe the girls can't speak out. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, no, I mean they can, but they can't. They can't. They get shut down. They, yeah, so yeah. there will be consequences. Yeah, bad consequences. It seems. Um, so, what do you think uh, will happen to us? Uh, I, I'm interested to see. Yeah, like my site's audited. This is what I don't get. So, like every year on my porn sites, um. My payments company goes through my site and they're so detailed. Like I had an article about um, Japanese art and um, tentacle porn. Mm -hmm. And I had this painting from like 150 years ago of, a, of an octopus. Okay. And it wasn't sexual. It was just like a painting of an octopus. And I had to remove it because of bestiality and it's against Visa and MasterCard's rules. Uh -huh. And... You know, like they're going through all the pages like that. So why aren't Visa and MasterCard, why aren't why isn't Rocco's site held to the same standards that mine is? I think uh, like who's who's letting him have like non consensual content and like attempted anal rape on his site when I can't do anything like that on mine? Because you don't make as much money, I think. Possibly, but I mean that's the only reason I can yeah, Think but, you know, Visa and MasterCard, they're usually strict. Like, I, I just don't know who, who's in, someone's editing this scene, someone's marketing it. Mm -hmm. So people are watching it. Yeah. And no one's like going, you know what? Like, um, this girl just doesn't look happy. Uh, is this okay? I think people have been uh, conditioned to think that it's all right. Yeah, or, or is it that... Um, you know, like, because you can get into, like, an, a, a habit of editing. Yeah. So if you know, like, so with Rocco's scenes, he doesn't, um, he likes them in one take. So if they're in one take, you're not going to edit, right? You're just going to, like, top and tail it, mm -hmm. put an end screen, watermark. So there's maybe no one's actually bothered to look. I don't know. Like, could be. Could be no, one, no one's looked if you give them the benefit of the doubt. But, like, it took me five minutes to find... Mm -hmm. like hot, the vile things of it mm -hmm. five minutes so yeah the idea that no one knows is really hard to believe but you know at the same time i know this company quite well and i know that yeah they're super well, ethical. and as nelly said on the podcast evil angel the other company involved they're 
the, her favorite company to work with for rough sex in america they do everything right everything's amazing but in europe it's different yeah so you do have this duality mm-hmm. um hmm. but yeah and then the other thing i thought of is like um you know we've just got to send the evidence in yeah to, to as many italian journalists as possible everyone writing about rocco just get it to them um see what they think of it yeah. i'm really curious if an italian journalist sees um especially like the videos where it's so obvious that that is rape that mm-hmm. is anal rape if an italian journalist can watch that and then not write up that story like what was the motivation for that be like is it just that rocco is too valuable in terms of like um he gets too many clicks you know like because if you write a story about Rocco Sofredi in an Italian newspaper you you get lots of traffic you get ad money you know it's yeah because he's so famous there but I just don't understand the lack of curiosity like why are people not curious about him I they, think they are but maybe they don't see the problem with these videos you think I think so yeah you know Europe is different yeah so I think uh you know, they they um, you know mark it as uh, rough, and that's it. They're just well, that's his style. You know, mm. some people grow up on his porn. I know some people like that, and you know, it's well, yeah. that that's Rocco. You know, imagine um, that. Like, yeah, he's just like just just rapey Rocco. You know? Yeah, that's just <laughs> he's him. just a bit rapey. But you know, it's it just took, his style. It took some time for the Me Too movement, the Harvey Weinstein thing, where at one point it became not okay, but for decades it was, you know, the thing that mm-hmm. Hollywood actresses went through with him. Like it was just, and and many people knew. Yeah, it was just like you know, well. This is how it is. Yeah. And yeah. so there's a breaking point. It's at some stage where it wasn't okay anymore. You know? So I think these things take time. Yeah, but in the in that time, you know, there's girls being sent to him and they're at risk. Like they're yeah. very vulnerable. Especially the ones that don't speak English. But and, it seems as if no one gives a fuck. Yep. So and and you know what was really telling for me, like when I published that podcast, um, obviously people in the industry saw it. Obviously. But not one person defended him. You know, not one person. There wasn't one single girl or guy that publicly said, you know, that's wrong. What like, what what do you mean? Like that just disagreed that said, no, that's not true. Rocco doesn't do that. Ah, so no one no, said it wasn't true. Okay. No one disagreed with Nelly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people were agreeing. Not, not even privately. Like um, everyone like, agreed with at least part of it. I think many people agreed that, you know, it should be better not to talk about it mm. or not to put out negative stuff. Yeah, lots of people said that. Yeah, I know. That's the majority. And... You know, they're like, yeah, you know, but, you know, it's better not to. As yeah. a matter of fact, uh, someone told me that the reason why he treats certain girls as he does is because they are not working well enough. And so it's just, you know, those who don't work well enough, they get a poorer treatment. So you should be ashamed if you you're so if you basically if you don't like the kind of sex Rocco likes then or you don't do what he expects you to do then it's on you because you make him mad not being good enough you know he sounds like a lovely person <laughs> who said that he sounds like a lovely person you know yeah wow um yeah I mean I think maybe time to wrap up now but yeah um but you know, it's an endless topic. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's my challenge to Rocco. You know, he said... He doesn't need to... He said he's got no questions to yeah. answer. So I found some videos of him abusing, ainly raping, yeah. and attempting to ainly rape, you know, 
several girls so i'd like to hear his explanation for those scenes yeah so it's an open discussion you know we can it, yeah is it is it is it scripted <laughs> like yeah is it you i'd know, be amazed acting? you know if it's scripted show me the script we we are teach me how to get these girls that can't even understand basic words how to act so well you know we just want we, we're just uh, curious uh cats here yeah you and i we we like to dig and you know get some questions answered yeah and i'm gonna keep digging as well i can't do much because you know i'm one person and i have to do my job and make sure i eat but i'll keep digging and if anybody finds you know videos that yeah they think are non-consensual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or then, there's uh, something abusive in them i'm not acting and not consensual stuff but something that's genuinely uh disturbing let's say just send them to me and now add them to, or just add them yourself on Twitter and use the hashtag Rocco Files. I think we'll see what happens. And you know, um, it's um, we do have freedom of speech, right? We do, but we can't accuse someone of something that's not true if we damage their reputation. Well, we haven't. No, I don't believe I have. Like well, we are just asking, you know. If no, no, I definitely on those videos. I'm saying. <laughs> Like the things I said, I'm saying, I, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, based on like my professional opinion, which is expert opinion, and based on um, what my eyes are showing me. Yeah, and so some people would uh, would say to us that, so why are you bringing this up? Why are you sharing it? Like, is your purpose to uh, damage someone here or? you know um, no, no like yeah some people think that like my purpose is to like get famous or to make money for the podcast but mm. like, my podcast doesn't make money well you still only <laughs> like, have me here so yeah. you're clearly not doing like, well <laughs> and um you know i have enough money and income to be fine yeah we, we um, don't all have to be super successful and famous yeah but no i'm doing it because um it's dear to your heart. I wouldn't put you those, but I just say that if I if I don't, I'd feel dirty. Yeah, like, like uh, you're part of something. Yeah, dirty. I, I feel really ashamed that I didn't say anything a long time ago, because all it would have taken was like a quick Google search, and I would have found the things I found today. Yeah, and I feel like if I just googled. When I first heard rumors, if I'd just done a little bit of research, then I could have spoken out. But, you know, I didn't. I just kept quiet like everybody else. So. Do you think uh, people will hate us? Uh, I think they already hate me. So I think I'm. Oh, I'm, su I'm sure they hate me as well. I'm not so sure, but I think they might be quite. I was, I was quite surprised that you did this, to be honest. Why? Just because you have a bit more to lose than me, I think. What? Well, just because you still work for companies and things like that. So. Yeah, but I don't have to. You don't have to, but you do a little bit. Um. <laughs> there was also a rumor that <laughs> allegedly Rocco said about me that I was bipolar. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. So Bipolar girls are usually good at sex, I find. So, you know, it's, that I'm... It's a compliment. I'll take it. I, I'll take it. <laughs> I actually, I actually have a borderline personality disorder and depression. Really? But yeah, but not not bipolar. So it's fine. I didn't know you had borderline. I'm on the mild spectrum. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. So that was um, our that was special Rocco files. Yeah, that, that was our Christmas episode. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Share Merry the love. 